good Wednesday morning, everybody. Come on in. It's a breakfast time. As you can see, I got my vittles all laid out here to be uh, cooked. I've got my prep work done. And what I'm doing, this, what I had planned on doing was omelets, toast, and uh, sausage, pan sausage. I've already got them on cooking. And then just in the nick of time, Kareem said, Grandma, do you have anything that you can make pancakes out of? Or he said, oh, either if you don't, I'll take uh, what do you call French toast. So, honey, he caught right in the nick of time because I had already put my eggs, already beat them up for, I beat up six eggs for uh, omelets. So I'm still going to have an omelet because that's what I got on my mind. And I'm going to go ahead now. I'm just going to do one single egg there. And that will make some French toast for him because it doesn't take that much um, mixture to make French toast. So I can do some French toast. Eggs already scrambled, sitting on, on deck waiting to be uh, cooked. So we're going to do uh, French toast, eggs, and sausage for Kareem. And I'm just going to have a piece of just regular toast and a nice omelet because that's what I got my mouth set for. So. It won't cause a lot of extra, but I don't mind because y'all know me. And matter of fact, I have been in the kitchen cooking a whole lot. I have to share with y'all. I got a back issue, and let me tell you what, that side of the nerve has kicked in again. And I'm, I'm just waiting on an appointment to go get it seen about, so I have to just tranquilo, y'all. Y'all know, y'all uh, side of the nerve uh, folks that are out there, you all know what I'm talking about. So I have to take it as I can take it. And even though, uh, to me, for, for me, the side of nerve pain basically never goes away until you either get one of those epidural shots or it just goes away on its own, and it rarely does it go away on its own. Uh, I shared with y'all before that I had the surgery, and it went away for a couple of years, and then it came back, and I've had a shot a couple of times. So now, the sh you know, I'm back to that. So anyway, that's why I have not been uploading as much. You know, I try to I have to pick and choose my battles, as they say. So this morning, I choose to conquer some uh, sausage, uh, omelet, French toast. So here we go, y'all. Got the sausage, the pan sausage already cooking. These are fork pan sausage. Of course, I can only have one, y'all. Can only have one. Kareem likes to at least have three. So I got four in my pan here, and they're cooking. And I'm going to have, you know, of course, I should say for him, pan sausage, eggs, and French toast. Now, this is my egg skillet. I'm, I'm going to get a bigger skillet for it since I know I'm doing French toast. So I can put it all in there at one time, y'all. Oh, let me see. Hmm. Maybe I can get it all in this pan that I've already got sitting on. I think I'm going to try that. That way, that's a, you know, less pots I got to wash, so to speak. So, I've already got my um, sausage almost done here. Almost done, almost done. So, what are y'all doing this morning? Y'all having breakfast or you just having a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, uh, a shake or whatever? Hold on, I got my TV on. It's competing with me. The, the, the ladies are competing with me. I got my cup set up, y'all, for a hot cup of coffee. I feel like coffee versus uh, my usual echinacea and uh, green tea this morning. I'll have that later. I don't know why. I'm sure I sound nasal because I feel nasal. And if my voice sounds kind of thick and deep, it's probably this weather because it's overcast and sort of cloudy light. So I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I know I feel nasally this morning. So... I got my coffee mixture. Let me just show you while the meat's cooking, what I've got going on here. In my cup, I've got a half a teaspoon of turmeric. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of ginger, a teaspoon and a half of coffee, uh, um, probably a couple tablespoons of uh, creamer in my coffee. I didn't have my usual flavor creamer. And I'm going to put a dash of vanilla in there, two packs of um, stevia, and that's going to be my coffee. 
and I've got my turmeric in there also so you know I always put turmeric and ginger into uh, my coffee or tea whichever one I'm having so today I'm having a hot cup of coffee because that's what I feel like eating with you know certain things you eat seem like tea goes better and then something else you eat it might seem like coffee goes better so with my omelet and slice of toast I chose a hot cup of coffee it's too hot to drink right now so I'm gonna have to sit it to the side and let it cool down a little bit before I get started with it. So, again, I'd like to know what y'all are doing. What, what are you feeling? You know, we've, in this, since um, I last talked to y'all, honestly, there have been so many things going on. Things are changing. Unfortunately, we are still, uh, some folk are still in and not moving about too much. So, something changes that are happening in the world. We don't really feel or experience it. We have to sort of listen for them on TV or for somebody to tell us because a lot of us are still hunkered down at home. I know for one, I am. I do go out to, you know, do if I have a little shopping to do, like I went plant shopping one day, go to the grocery store, or if I have a doctor's appointment, certainly I do that. But outside of that, I'm home. And I'm not intermingling, you know, and uh, conversing with people face to face. And it's so disheartening. Uh, for instance, I went out yesterday to return a plant and I encountered someone that I had known. They had been neighbors, but they've moved away. But we've been very close friends uh, over the years. And you know how time will set things apart just like it'll bring things together. Well, this situation, because of the male part of that relationship had gotten sick. My husband had gotten sick. So we sort of didn't see each other for a while. So I encountered them yesterday. And I had my hands full. So I didn't run, you know, normally I would have went over to the car, hugged them, tell them how glad I am to see them again and all this kind of, but I couldn't do that because I had on a mask and my hands were full and then the social distancing kicked in. So it's amazing how things happen so automatically in our lives and we don't even understand it until something happens and when that happened I felt I felt neglectful because I just went from my car. I didn't, because again, normally I would have gone over to them, encountered them, greeted them, engaged them. Uh, you know, he was uh, uh, on a walker or whatever. And, and so I, and I, I thought, just go into the store. And sure enough, when we got it, we were going to the same area. And uh, at that point, we did, you know, we greeted each other. Everybody got on their mask and, you know, unconsciously for me anyway until I realized it I was backing up um, and you know I'm sure people do that all the time that's just one of those human things you know that we have to know that happens but stuff like that bothers me so I, I felt myself sort of backing up and at the same time I was on a mission in that store to return those faulty plants so I kind of was distracted with that a little bit but I, I could feel that, you know, that they wanted to embrace, but I thought, nah, don't do it. I, you know, I love you, I'm glad to see you and all of that, but let's not, let's, let's not go there. So, we, you know, we have to be, you know, we, we are uh, handling so many things in our mind on a daily basis when we step outside the door and without really even realizing it, but when you go back and reflect on it, it just lets you, it, it, it sort of jostles you and lets you know where you are in this world today, where your spirit is, where your mind is, where you are as an individual, who you are as an individual. I'm telling you, this thing is real. And, you know, I know in some instances, things have let up, they've changed, they've eased off, but it's still there. That stigma is still there. So I, will, you know, I maintain from the minute that I knew it was real, that the world will never be the same again. Not just North Carolina, the United States, or our neighboring states, the world will never be the same. And of course, you know, the racial unrest is there. That's another element. And at this point, it has trumped, so to speak, COVID. It has risen above COVID. And we are distracted now by one thing 
and the, but the other is still there and it's very real it's just as strong now as it was when they announced it but because we have another greater distraction and because we're human beings we're creatures of habit and that's what happens in our lives one thing happens and we are and then something else happens that rises above it and we avert our attention to that thing so that's why we at least that's why i am because now i'm thinking about uh you know, with the with the um, virus situation, I'm thinking about my health, my children's health, my friends' health. You know, who's at risk, who's not at risk, and I'm certainly a high risk because of a certain situations that the health situations that I have. So you know, those had my full attention. But now with racial unrest, I'm thinking, you know, yeah, that too, and you know, everybody seems to be all right health wise, and now we're going through the racial unrest i have again i repeat i have 20 odd grandchildren grandsons and that seems to be the target of this racial unrest so every time i hear one of these reports about something happening to a young uh, black man then it, it unnerves me so i'm unnerved now by that more than i am by the uh, virus situation so you see how we have to go through it and we have to you know we we have to understand that this thing that we're going through in this life honey is real i believe it is anyway so uh who out there with me y'all believe it's real i believe all of it's real and we have to adjust and conduct ourselves accordingly in order to survive this situation almost um, so we just have to abide in in the things of God, and like I say, as we always say on this channel, anyway, pray without ceasing because we we have to do that in order to overcome some things in this life. So let's get back to these sauces. They're about ready. I'm gonna take them from the pan here, and we're gonna move on to uh, getting this French toast done. So hold on just a minute, and I will be right back. Okay, we're ready to get this uh, French toast going. And I'm using that, uh, the thick, I, it was like one slice, but I cut it in half. This is a thick, the artisan brioche bread. I buttered one side because I was intending to make toast out of it. So you don't have to really put butter on it, but just dip it in that. Uh, this is an egg and milk mixture. This is a buttered skillet. Medium high heat, don't want it too high because you want it to get nice and cooked all the way through before it gets too brown. So I'm using uh, two slices of bread is what I've used. Okay. And I'll say medium high heat. Okay. I don't put in cinnamon. I don't know if the reason particularly cares for cinnamon all that much. He's mainly looking for that uh, toasted, sweet toasted taste. And then he'll put syrup on it, of course. And that will make him feel like he's eating pancakes pretty much. You know what I'm thinking? I might need to can I get another one in there. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put another, I can get another one in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this other one in half. You have to always have one for the road, don't we? And you know what? This is just one egg that I put in this mixture. And I'm telling you, it just does not take a lot because you put uh, a little bit of milk in there, put a little bit more margarine in the pan. This is smart start, y'all. A little bit more smart start. Oh uh, yeah, they're not sticking. I have to make sure they weren't sticking to the pan. So we're gonna get a little bit more going on in that pan. And those would be nice. Okay, so they're cooking along nicely right now. Uh, you have to cook, it takes about five minutes, about three minutes on each side. And then we flip them. And then take them on our pan and serve them up. Um, hope you all are having a God bless uh, Wednesday. And hope that, uh, hope that you all are on the stove cooking something ready to eat plate ready over here. We'll go ahead and start dressing this plate. 
Okay, there we go. Um, but as I was saying, though, we have just got to really hunker down as far as what's going on in the world today. We just got to hunker down and more or less, you know, just kind of wrap our heads around what's going on. Because I think in the beginning, as far as the virus was concerned, you know, it's like, because we never experienced this before. So that's natural to think, well, yeah, this is going to blow over. But as we can see, what, three months going and counting, we're still there. So, ooh, I forgot to put my, I hadn't put, look, y'all. I don't like just coffee without uh, sugar, so I had not put any sweetener in my coffee so let me get over here and get me some stevia now if i was a person that did that like say just black coffee or coffee without sweetener that is a rich robust flavor in this cup but i like me a little sweetener to knock the edge off um and this food line brand instant coffee at that i'm surprised now i've, I've drank some coffee in my life and i used to call myself the coffee connoisseur of north carolina I got into coffee. I was buying that gourmet coffee online. Uh, a, a dear friend of mine got me started. As a matter of fact, uh, my dear friend Wilson Eagleson. I think I shared with y'all that Wilson Eagleson was one of the Tuskegee Air, one of the original Tuskegee Airmen, and he lived right here, right around the corner from me. And we were in an uh, organization called the Wilson B. Eagleson. Um, Tuskegee Airmen chapter right here and um, locally and Wilson and my husband and I you know, along with the other people we became friends but Wilson was a coffee drinker while wow, he was a coffee drinker and whenever we met him Wilson was 80 I think 4 now he of course been Tuskegee Airmen he was one of the uh, pilots that flew in uh, World War to and became infamous or famous, however you want to call it, for um, the Red Tail Angels. And so, you know, fortunately for our community, this is where he was, uh, where he lived. And we became fast friends, and he was just the, the best person, one of the, just a great guy. And he loved, he loved, he loved himself some coffee. And I liked coffee as well, because when I worked, that was one of my things. I always had a pot of coffee in my office set up ready to go and um so he introduced me to the gourmet coffee and honey let me tell you the flavor of coffees and he told me he said i tell you what i'm gonna give you because you have you if you ordered or got in that coffee club you got a coffee pot a coffee maker rather and you got the coffee so he gave me a maker and he gave my first bag of coffee and i just fell in love with coffee with flavored coffee, and mine was Irish cream. And whenever he would come over, he and my husband and I would sit and talk, and we would take out a couple cups of coffee. And you know what, he was such a gentleman. Wilson was a smoker. Who was he a smoker? But as we got to know him, he came here and he would sit at my table and drink coffee, he never smoked. He held it for that time. And you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm telling this story and I'm, I'm just thinking about that. That's coming to mind. He was that thoughtful. He was a thoughtful person. And he was the most outstanding thing about one of the other, you know, just human element type things about Wilson <laughs> was that at 80 something, he was still driving a vehicle. And whenever we, and we used to go on these speaking circuits all over North Carolina to different places. And guess who drive most of the time? Wilson. He wanted to drive because now what you have to understand about people, and I was talking about this the other day, when a person has a special skill, God-given or trained, when they get those special skills inside of them, and that's who they are and how they do, those instincts and those skills stick with me. Wilson, look, I never saw him wear glasses. Honey, I was wearing glasses tenfold. He never had on glasses. He never had glasses to drive. He did not. I mean, he drove us all over everywhere. And look, we got there and back safely as far away as a couple hundred miles. So I just remember him. Every time I take a drink a cup of coffee, 
I remember my friend Wilson. Of course, he's long passed away. Uh, oh Lord, maybe ten years ago by now. But I remember him. I love him. I cherish those times with him. And I can say he was the one that got me introduced to gourmet coffee. But uh, I, I've always loved coffee from a little girl. And uh, this uh, that's why I'm comparing. What I'm comparing now is like this food line instant. It's good. Because, I, like I said, I've drank coffee with the best, and I've drank some of the best coffee, but this is good coffee, y'all. Okay, I believe the French toast is ready. We're going to go ahead and get these eggs going. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me get this toast out of the pan. Okay, it's time to get these uh, gourmet scrambled eggs going. Uh, hey, I got cheese in here. I don't want to put all these eggs in here because I'm going to... I mean, this is like two eggs, uh, four eggs, and then I'm going to have to save me enough for two eggs on it. How about that? So that should be enough right there. These are gourmet eggs. We had that skill a little bit hotter than it needed to really be, but that's okay. Just have to back that heat off because it's hot enough to uh, cook. We're just about turning it off. It doesn't take a lot of heat to fry an egg anyway. We don't want them prematurely cooking before the cheese really melts and goes through there a little bit. So these are my eggs. I put a little bit of uh, complete seasoning, some butter. I'm not butter. I put milk, a little bit of cream in there, some um, cheese. You can cheese with your choice. Whatever cheese you have to lay around the fridge, just put it right in there. And what I'm going to do now is just bring it right over here. And this is Kareem's plate here. Hope y'all can see that. Let's see. Pretty much bring it up a little, a little bit closer. I got trivets on the plate. So to protect the plate from the hot burner. I know y'all trying to figure out what was she doing with that plate on that hot burner. But it's not really that. That's not really what's happening now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put Kareem's eggs. Make sure they salty. Mm -hmm. seasoned enough. These nice soft scrambled gourmet. So that is Kareem's breakfast. So he can come on here and start eating really. So French toast, sausage, and gourmet scrambled eggs, y'all. See how quick and easy that was? Pretty much real time. Okay, so Hooray! I'll get him in here. So now I'm gonna I get him out of the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get me an omelet made. I've got me a piece of sausage waiting over there for me. And I'm just gonna have like a half a piece of toast. I don't do a lot of bread. I should. And that's why I went ahead and cut that uh, toast in half. So let me just go and clean up a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Here we go. Kareem's had his food. I'm getting ready to finish mine up. This is his plate, clean, clean from stem to stern. He enjoyed that. So now it's time for me to get mine. I decided I had to sit down for a minute. I was doing something, so I sort of got sidetracked. But anyway, I'm back to finish my meal because, again, I told you I'm eating something a little bit different than what he had. I'm doing me a two egg omelet I have got my I've got some here I put these in the microwave I did some spinach some onions and some peppers and um, I've got some tomato that I'm going to dice in but I didn't include it with the um, microwave because you know tomatoes will heat up and do what they do quickly so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour my Egg, my two eggs into this. See. I've got some olive oil pan spray and I'm going to let it heat up just a little bit more while I get my tomato out of the fridge. Where are you? There, I found it. Let me see. I decided to use this tomato because I cut it a couple of days ago. And I like a lot of veggies in my uh, omelet anyway, so this is right on time for me. 
Okay, we just want to slice it up. Right, so I'm going to put, it's about a, a fourth of a tomato, which is a, a, a little bit. But I'm going to put it right on in there. Y'all hold on a minute. Let me get my little sample egg out of here. And I'll return to complete the task. Mmm. Okay, so what I did was just took that oil out because it was like getting a little bit brown. I don't like brown oil. Um, even though it's just olive oil, I'm just going to re put me a little. Uh, this is just some uh, smart start. So I almost forgot the name of it. And so I'm going to put some. Um, what happened was I left the burner on under it, and you know, you can't leave the burner, even if it's slow, you cannot leave it burner on for a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my two eggs in. It has a little bit of cheese in there. Remember, I put cheese in the one that Kareem had. So there we go. And we're going to let that begin to uh, sort of bubble up a little bit. My, my omelet is going to be more veggies than egg anyway. So let's get it going. Cause I'm ready to eat and I'm hungry now. I am really ready to eat now. Okay. Let's let it get all the way around. And this is on medium low heat, y'all. Okay. I've also got a, about a, tea, a tablespoon of cheddar cheese that I'm gonna put in there, just a tablespoon of oil. It's already grated. Okay, that is my cheddar, and now I'm going to go ahead and start putting in, and I, I got a piece of sausage, and you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to crumble my sausage right into my omelet. I want my sausage inside my omelet, so I got one sausage, and I'm going to crumble, because this is what I had planned to do anyway, so I just crumble my sausage right into that omelet, it's going to be so good, y'all. Then I'm going to go ahead and start putting my veggies in. My spinach, my onions, peppers, all everything's in there now. Get that heat all the way on low. I'm ready to fold it now so I can flip it. And fold it like so. Okay. And we're going to let it stay right there for a minute or two because I want everything to heat all the way through. It's all the way on low. It's not a matter of cooking now. This is about heating. So what I need to do now 
is get this flipped over because most of my veggies, so I'm just going to do it like that. Okay, it's got a little brown on the outside, but that's okay. So now I got my heat all the way on low, and we're just going to let that stay there for about a couple of minutes. I can really turn the heat off because I'm now I'm heating. So while we're waiting on my omelet to finish, I'm going to go ahead. I got a, uh, I have some, guacam some guacamoles. I got some uh, avocados in the fridge, and I bought a bunch of them. Let me take that off the heat because I don't want it to get hard. So I've got some one avocado, one tablespoon of mayo, and I've got one wedge of uh, laughing cow cheese and a tablespoon of salsa. And I'm gonna go ahead and just mix this. And this, I'm making my version of guacamole, y'all. Tanya brought some guacamole here yesterday from, um, I believe it was from Chipotle. It was real good, it was real good, y'all. It was really, really good. So, I won't need to add any salt. I'm not gonna add any salt to this. I love the natural flavor of guacamole. I really do. It's a little loose, but that's okay. So this is my version of guacamole. You saw it first right here in my test kitchen, y'all. And this will make a good mixture. And when I get ready to eat that omelet, I'm gonna spread it right on top of that omelet. So I will have a full vegetable omelet with uh, everything in it. Mm. That's some good eating, y'all. So that is ready. And over here, also on the, right here, what you see, this is um, some fresh papaya that I peeled last night. So I'm gonna be eating some of that. That'll be my fruit. And I've got one half of a piece of uh, brioche toast that I'm gonna be eating with my breakfast. So in a minute, I'm gonna take my omelet out, dress my plate, and I'll be right back. Okay, breakfast is served, y'all. There is my omelet, my fruit. And of course, I'm gonna end it off with a blob of guacamole, you know it, guacamole right in the center there. Since I didn't put my tomatoes inside, I put them on top of my omelet. So I'm ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Hope nobody disturbs me before I get it down. And there goes the doorbell. Hold on, y'all. Okay, y'all, I'm back. The doorbell rang as per I knew it was going to do. So, anywho, my breakfast is ready. I've got my omelet with my big plob of... Uh, my version of guacamole, some uh, fresh papaya, some fresh green grapes, and I've got my tomatoes on the side. I sauteed them anyway because I forgot to put them into my omelet, but they'll serve the same purpose. I've got myself some good old uh, turmeric and ginger coffee, so I'm getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy. By the way, at the door was a lady that lives up the street, and uh, she is part of her church's outreach for delivering food to seniors, uh, to sick, the shut-in, homeless, whomever. Uh, and she was bringing me some stuff, but uh, I run, not, not, not ironically, but as a blessing, someone bought me that same box already, so I told her. I didn't realize what she was bringing, because I, I don't ever try to turn away stuff. So when I got the call, I told them, sure, come on. But when I saw it was stuff that I already had in abundance, I asked them to, you know, go ahead and share it with someone else because I had plenty and I had shared part of what I got the uh, day before yesterday. So anyway, um, those are some of the things that are just going on in the neighborhood and I'll be so excited when I can get my health together so I can be one of those people that does some of the outreach because that is my life's work to reach out to people. I think it's such a rewarding work. I think it's a worthwhile work. And it's also something that uh, can get you doing, especially for retired people or senior citizens, because my friend is a senior citizen and she has some issues, but she's still able to volunteer and do things. That's what I was talking about earlier or before on one of my uh, talks is like how certain things that are ingrained in you, some inert things in you, like I was talking about Wilson and his ability to still drive at 84 because he used to be a pilot. He had those skills. So this lady was a uh, highly respected person in the community. Now she's older, got some serious health issues, but she's still out there on the battlefield volunteering. 
that's what I love about people. That's why I love people. That's why I love reaching out. That's why I love helping. And at any stage of life, if you have the will to do a thing, you can do it. So, look, I got to go eat my food before it gets cold. But that was just on my heart to say because we can all do something in spite of. Because I do a lot of things in spite of. But ideally, we want to do things when we're feeling great. But that's not always the way. There was some scripture. Here I go again. I don't know where to guide you to, but you can get the gist of the meaning. There's some scripture in the Bible that talks about this woman that gave out of her need. Now, she had a need. She didn't have a whole lot, but she gave anyway. God honors those characteristics in us. And for those of us who have them, we know that God put them there. They're not overshadowed by anything, not even by our own uh, maladies or our own shortcomings. So, you know, do what you can for people when you can. And you have to have a willing heart and mind to do. You have to have a mind to do in order to do. So, anyway, y'all, I'm getting ready to wrap this up here. Oh, my carrot juice. I have to show y'all my pretty carrot juice. Y'all know what I I squoze me some, not squoze, but I, I juiced me some carrot and, um, there goes my phone again. I juiced some carrot and celery juice, and it's all nice and frosty now. And I put it in the refrigerator. Okay, this is unknown, so I don't have to answer this. I don't, un, I don't really answer calls that says unknown name. So anyway, I got my water, my carrot juice, and my coffee. I'm getting ready to sit back, relax, and really, truly enjoy my meal. And I hope that uh, you got something good on your plate today or getting ready to or going to do it tomorrow. So listen, guys, I love you. Continue to pray without ceasing. Uh, uplift somebody, encourage someone. Keep trying to reconcile all the differences in your life that you can to make your life and someone else's better. Pray without ceasing above all. Listen, y'all, keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. I love you all so much. Toodaloo.